All right, Google Pixel versus iPhone 7. This is going to be a six-month look at both of these phones, an honest review, my likes, my dislikes, all the good, bad, and the ugly of these two brand new phones. Well, they're not brand new anymore, but they're definitely new for end of 2016 and half of 2017. And this honest look at the Google Pixel and the Apple iPhone 7. So jumping right in, you may wonder why I haven't done any official reviews of both of these devices independently. And that's mostly because these are both top of the line devices from both manufacturers. Um, this is Google's first entry into the smartphone market, but they've done so with both feet. They've jumped right in to producing a top of the line phone. Apple always produces top of the line phones. Uh, and so this is their latest iteration of their Apple iPhone. But because of that, they've, I've sort of reserved this video to a side-by-side. -side. I think a lot of people are going to be interested in these phones or are interested in these phones um, and are trying to decide which one they should get. And after having used both of these phones over the last few months, I can give you an honest look at which one's better, which one uh, is the best phone to have, which one's the best phone to own if you're undecided on both of these. And so what we'll do is we'll talk about the hardware first. I'm just going to go ahead and turn the screens off on both these guys. Apple has always decided to stick with their 4.7 inch screen here on the iPhone 7, similar to the 6 and the 6S. The 7 is very, very similar to the 6 and the 6S in terms of its body shape, its design, its build, it's an aluminum unibody construction. Uh, there is still a camera bump. It is less significant than the other camera bump. It has more of a sort of uniform look and feel to it here, um, but it is still raised and so the phone will end up scratching. Uh, the camera will end up scratching if you rub it on a surface. Um, sort of one of the downsides to the build here, but uh, nice smooth finish. The antenna lines have been redesigned so you don't get that chunky weird look to it as you had on the 6 and 6s. Uh, overall a very very subtle but very nice design change here on the iPhone 7. It does feel very sleek, very slim in your hand compared to the Pixel. The Pixel does feel chunkier. It is a thicker phone so if you can look at them side by side you can actually tell a little bit thicker here on the Pixel. It is a little bit heftier too. Um, the Google Pixel, I believe, is a 5.1 or 5.2 inch display, so it's a hair bigger in terms of its screen real estate. It does make it a larger phone overall, too. You can kind of see the difference there in the length and in the width and in the depth of the phone, too. So it does, even though they are very similar in terms of uh, the real world use of them, they are different feeling in the hand, and that can be important to some people. A lot of people like having the thin sleekness of the iPhone, and I definitely notice it when I've been using the Pixel for a few weeks and then switch back over to the iPhone. I can tell that there's a difference in how the phone feels, and it feels much more sexy, much more sleek in your hand uh, than compared to the Pixel. Another thing to talk about between the two, uh, the Google Pixel does have a glass back on the top here, which to me is a bad decision. Um, you can kind of see some of the scratches right here in the corner. If you don't put a case on this, this back is going to get really scratched up, really damaged, especially if you drop it, this glass can break. Big fingerprint reader in the Pixel is built into the back of the phone, which is nice because it allows you to just grab the phone, boom, unlock it with the Pixel uh, fingerprint scanner on the back. Very, very fast, very, very easy. Uh, in contrary, the iPhone 7 has the fingerprint built into the home button, and this actually isn't a button anymore. This is just a fingerprint rest, and so when, what happens is, is you end up pressing on it, you get haptic feedback, which is a, a resistance. You can actually feel the button go doink, but it's not actually moving. So if the phone's off and you actually press on this, nothing happens. It's a solid part of the phone, uh, and you only get feedback from it when you actually place your finger on there. Uh, and a good point of reference here is that if you don't have open fingers, so if you're using one of those touch-sensitive gloves, it's not going to work. So you have to have a bare finger on there. So any kind of glove or anything, you're not even going to feel the home button because uh, you're not going to get that resistance unless you have a bare finger. Other things to talk about in terms of the design, um, Google was nice enough to include USB-C on their phone, which is really great. It's nice to have that current technology. Uh, Apple has USB-C in all their new laptops, which is weird that they still are sticking with Lightning <laughs> and not USB-C, so you, Google gets a bonus point there. Um, Google also has a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack in the top, which is great. Nice to be able to plug headphones in, whereas the iPhone has gone ahead and done something stupid and removed their, US, or removed their headphone jack from the bottom of the phone, which makes it really inconvenient to plug something into this when you want to charge the phone. So if you have your charging plug port, uh, <laughs> port plugged into this and you want to have your headphones plugged into it, you either need an adapter that can do both or you have to alternate between the two. So that's really, really annoying, especially for people that spend a lot of time in the car, want to charge the phone and listen to music. Uh, they really can't do both at the same time without having to spend extra money. Other things to talk about with the body. Um, Big, big change here for Google and Android in general. Uh, you know, Google decided to release this top-of-the-line phone. 
without waterproofing and without stereo speakers. The iPhone, on the other hand, has waterproofing and has stereo speakers. And so a little bit of a role reversal there. Typically, Android is the leader in terms of uh, features such as waterproofing, stereo speakers, stuff that's new to market. Google has sort of taken a back seat here to Apple. Now, Apple has taken the lead in terms of providing a phone that is waterproof. You can dunk it in the toilet, you can drop it in the sink, uh, and also has stereo speakers. There's a spe loudspeaker here in the top, as well as in the bottom. And so you get a nice stereo experience with the music while you're playing it. Google, unfortunately, the Pixel only has uh, one speaker here in the bottom, uh, so you don't get that loud stereo sound like you do with the iPhone. So a little bit of a difference there between the two, uh, and a little bit of a paradigm shift here between Android and iPhone. One of the other major features of both of these phones is the camera. Excellent camera on both of these phones. Uh, they're both going to offer you excellent, excellent video quality as well as photo quality. Uh, the cameras are nice and fast, quick to focus. I'll just snap two really quick photos here. Um, you know, the, the slow motion video recording is awesome. The quality of the actual camera in low light is awesome. You really can't go wrong with either of these cameras uh, if you want a great mobile powerhouse, you know, for your photo and video needs. Uh, if we look at both of these pictures here, I mean, you can make, this is just a very unscientific test uh, here, but you can see that the sharpness, the quality, a little bit more saturated here on the pixel, that could just be exposure values or some other component, but, you know, very, very good sharpness and detail uh, on both of these phones. And so excellent, excellent quality results uh, from both cameras in these phones. You will not be disappointed with either one that you choose. Um, other features of the phone that may be important to talk about in a side-by-side -side sense, the speed of opening apps, the speed in how you interact with the phone. Google has done a wonderful job here catching up with iPhone and just in terms of the overall user experience. Apps open and close quickly on the Pixel. Everything seems lightning fast, very, very little delays with anything. Uh, we'll just go ahead and we'll, we'll do something like launch Instagram here. I'm just gonna take this phone off airplane mode. Uh, just to make sure that we get a signal here and uh, we'll just show you guys a side-by-side -side of um, what it was what it would be like here to launch an app we'll just get rid of that and get rid of that <laughs> get all these notifications um, and we'll launch Instagram on both of these and we'll go back and we'll go back and we'll just do that go home go home so you can see that uh, both apps launch quickly, they both load quickly, it doesn't feel slow on either of these. You don't run into any software glitches with Android anymore. Google's done a really great job with in terms of loading, uh, in terms of its software and how good it feels, how quick things load, how fast everything feels on this phone. And like I said, they're, they're like that together. They're both really, really solid phones in terms of the software and the user experience. Other things to talk about are the price and the networks. Um, these phones are basically the same with their price, you know, 32 gig and 32 gig starting uh, sizes. I believe it's $650 for the iPhone and around $650 for the Pixel. That may change depending on how prices shift in the market. Um, but overall, you're getting a premium phone at a premium price. Gone are the days of the inexpensive Nexus phones from Google. Uh, now replaced with a higher end pixel phone and the higher end pixel price to go along with it. Uh, network wise, they're both unlocked. You can buy these phones. The individual models will work on any carrier in the United States. Um, this typically has been advertised as only working on Verizon, but that's false. You can use this on anything. It has the radios to work on uh, Straight Talk, on T-Mobile, on you know Ting, uh, all the MNVNOs, uh, all the third party carriers. I, I'm using mine on Total Wireless, which has been working great. Uh, Verizon, Sprint, AT&T, you know, etc. Uh, both phones fully support LTE and fully support the networks in the United States. Um, internationally, that may be different. I know the iPhone has a lot of it, sort of third-party radios that work around in different parts of Asia um, and Africa that have different LTE systems. I can't speak for Google in terms of those radios. You'd have to check the specs. But for North America, um, you're getting basically the same phone in terms of what networks it will support. Pricing-wise, I just mentioned both top of the line, both very expensive phones. Uh, what you're paying a premium for. Warranty wise, Apple definitely has the edge in terms of Apple Care. You can purchase additional Apple Care for this device, which will allow you to go into any Apple store and get a replacement if anything goes wrong with it, as well as a screen repair at a discounted price. Uh, Google, you will definitely have to send the phone in and back to Google if you have any issues with it, which can keep you without a phone for several days up to several weeks um, if you're having any issues. So, Apple Care definitely a better feature to have uh, from Apple for your iPhone. 
Other things to think about in terms of whether or not you should choose one of these phones. <laughs> Obviously, if you're heavily invested in the Android ecosystem, um, you can, uh, you know, probably rather use the i or excuse me, the Google Pixel over the iPhone. Uh, same thing goes if you're heavily invested in the Apple ecosystem. You can use uh, the. It's probably better to use the iPhone. But one point of note for that: many, 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 if not all, of the Google services that you have on the Google Pixel will work on the Apple iPhone. So as an example, I'm heavily invested in Google. I use Gmail, I use Google Voice, I use Google Photos, all of those things I can use on my iPhone, which that is the greatest thing about using both phones at once. Um, I can jump between the iPhone and between my Android seamlessly. I have no problem transitioning because I use Google Voice, so my calls will go between either. Uh, Google Pho Photos will back up my pictures on each device, regardless of which one I use. Um, Obviously, all my apps are synced between both phones, Facebook, Instagram, that kind of thing. Uh, and the other great thing is that um, popping the SIM out between phones is really, really easy. Piece of cake. Don't have to call Verizon or, excuse me, Total Wireless. Don't have to do anything. Just switch switch phones. No problem. Um, so, you know, you guys can be sure that this is an honest review that I've, you know, used these phones, <laughs> uh, you know, day in and day out over the course of the last few months. Um, and if I had to choose, so we'll close and say if I had to choose which one would I pick overall, it'd probably be the Android, the Google Pixel, um, mostly because I like the ability to set default apps. I like having the sort of openness um, of Android where I can tweak things if I decide to. I really don't have a need to do that anymore in terms of like custom ROMs and that sort of thing. But I just like having the ability to have new software, you know, the latest and greatest uh, features that Google likes to put into their builds. Um, Apple's definitely more conservative in that approach. They definitely like to take their time with, with uh, deploying new software features and new things down the road. So it doesn't necessarily mean the iPhone feels old. Um, it's just a slower road to get there uh, when you compare it to the things that Google are doing. So hope you guys enjoyed this little honest side-by-side -side of these two phones. Uh, check out everything else I have on YouTube and rate, comment, and subscribe. Thanks.